Floss Tube, it's Valerie at Stitching in the Barn, and today is Saturday, mm, it's the 14th of November, because I remember yesterday was Friday the 13th, so I was walking around going, ooh, <laughs> nothing happened extraordinarily, good or bad, it was a very pleasant day, um, it has stopped raining here finally, the sun is out, and the temperatures have dropped about 20 degrees, I laugh when I see... Uh, Michelle Farm Girl's videos of her dogs romping in the snow because as much as I love snow, I don't want it yet. <laughs> um, somebody asked, is it, well, you, how do you feel about decorating early this year? And normally my standard response would be like, oh no, absolutely, you have to give uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving their proper due, appreciate each one. But this has been such a bummer year. <laughs> I don't like wishing time away, but I sort of feel like, you know, if you want to put up a tree and lights now, go for it. You know, get in that happy spirit of um, festivity. Why not? You know, joy and peace and all those good things on earth. So uh, I say go for it. I haven't done it yet, but um, I think after Thanksgiving I will, which would be sort of early for me. Um, our normal thing was we were always away for Thanksgiving. We'd always be at a cousin's house. and We're not doing that this year. And so we will be home. We could start decorating sooner. So, you know, round about the end of Thanksgiving, beginning of December, I think is when, December 1st, for sure, I'll put something. I always put up an advent calendar on December 1st, but I might do a little more than that. Um, we've had some exciting news from my daughter and her college um, situation. I've told you before that her college um, was only allowing freshmen and sophomores their first semester, and then they were going to swap and allow just juniors and seniors there, and that way everybody could be distanced and have a single room. Well, they have done such a bang-up job, such a fabulous job keeping COVID at bay, that they decided they would allow sophomores to return in the spring as well. So poor little freshmen have to go home and do online classes for next semester, but um, my daughter said actually they were the ones who were being naughty and gathering socially as of course you know they're young they want to get to know friends at school that's completely natural but uh it was too much of a risk and also if they're not there they can use the freshman dorms to space out the sophomores juniors and seniors so hopefully it's just one more semester that people are dealing with this um i consider her very lucky that she is going to be allowed as far as we know now i'm knocking wood right now because who knows, the situation could change. But for now, they're saying sophomores may return in the spring along with juniors and seniors, and everybody will be given a single room. And that seemed to work for them. I think they had one case on campus all year, and they were able to isolate him and trace who he'd been with and keep those kids in quarantine as well, and everybody was fine. And um, so, yay. <laughs> uh but, you know, my daughter said she did feel bad for the freshmen having to leave campus. Um, although that's what she had to do last year. She was only there the first semester, and then she had to be home the second semester. Um, but she said it's so hard to get to know people when everyone's wearing masks all the time. She said she's quite shy, and she would look across, and if somebody kind of smiled at her, then she would feel comfortable approaching them later to chat, maybe. Um, she said you don't get that at all with masks all the time, so... It is what it is. Everybody's got to keep safe, so whatever. But um, So it's going to be a very much happier little girl that we go and collect before Thanksgiving. We were going to drive out to Ohio, my husband and I, and get her, and I was just dreading having her in the back seat, <laughs> moping that she was leaving campus and leaving all her friends and not returning till the following September or whatever. So it's going to be a much happier <laughs> Thanksgiving and Christmas celebration at our house I can assure you because the plan is um as of February she's supposed to go back so we'll see fingers crossed um I am probably gonna be home for Thanksgiving I don't know what you guys are all doing I know everybody's being urged to sort of rethink their plans for get-togethers and stuff like that so it'll be different this year but we got to do what we got to do and hopefully we will get this thing under control and then everybody can just you know have joyous celebrations later when it's safer but um I will show you what I've been working on because you're probably only interested in that um I finished my uh stitch along with the fat quarter shop the fright night mystery stitch along which was a lot of fun 
I loved the end result, you know, the, the final reveal. I thought it was cute and spooky, both, <laughs> both cute and spooky. So it's a good Halloween combination. So here's mine. I did it on the Laurie Holt 25 Count Lugana. I'm sorry, everything's so wrinkly. Uh, 25 Count Lugana. I think it was Cloudy is the name of this fabric. It has kind of a gray um, cast to it. But it was fun. It was cute. I enjoyed it. And I'll do something with that. Put it up for Thanksgiving next year. Um, I used weeks. The called for weeks for that. And I, it was very late in getting my number five pattern from the Prim Stitch, Stitch Along for Fat Quarter Shop, but it has finally arrived, so I've put a puny little start in. Um, here's mine so far. I've got all the border done now, because while I was waiting, I got all the border finished. So I've got parts one, two, three, four, uh, four. And then five is just the start of this flowers. It's like a quilted flower design. It's called Beauty and Simplicity. So that would be nice. I thought about changing the colors, but then I thought, no, it's prim, it's bright, it goes with the rest of it. I'm just gonna leave it alone and do it. And as I've said before, I'm, I'm doing mine big on 25 Count Lugana um, so that it'll be like a big banner, like a big wall hanging. So I'm excited about that. I can see exactly how long, how big it'll be. Ouch, I just stabbed myself with a needle. I hope I don't bleed on stuff. Oh. <laughs> Silly me. Um, I really, it was sticking out of my finger. I don't know, if, I'll have to go back and look on the tape and see if you can see it or not. But anyway, silly me. Um, I can see how big it'll be. So it'll be a nice sized wall hanging. Not, not huge, but not tiny by any means. So um, I heard Kimberly of Fat Quarter Shop say that Laura, um, Jan Hicks is doing hers over one. Uh, so I'd be really curious to see. I've got to go see if she shows it on her last video, um, how that's turning out, like what size it's going to be. I bet it's going to be cute. I did um, Home Sweet Home when we did that stitch along. I did that one over one and that was fun to do. So I gotta look for that needle later and make sure it's in the safe spot. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> uh, what else have I been doing? Oh! I have a finish. I forgot. I finished Prairie Schooler Pumpkin Patch. <clears throat> there goes my allergy voice again. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, Prairie Schooler Pumpkin Patch. Uh, an oldie but a goodie, and I finished it, and I have to be honest, as much as I love these designs, I find I get bored stitching them. I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is, because um, you're using the same colors over or what, but then the end result, I love it so much. So I just powered through it, and I'll have that ready for next Thanksgiving as well. But it, it's a darling pattern. I love their patterns. I love the colors they choose. I just find, I don't know, I just, unless it's a, like a smaller Santa, I just get distracted halfway or something. I don't know what my problem is, but I'm very pleased that I finished it and I like it very much. So nothing against the Prairie Schooler design. I just, I find I get, I, I get a little bored with them. I just do. I know that about myself. <laughs> um... I'm still working on Brenda Gervais, uh, Heart and Hand, this pattern. I've progressed a little bit on it. I need to really um, focus on it because I love it so, and I want to make more progress, but I'm getting there. Slow and steady. Now let me put this needle somewhere safe before I hold it up. And I should have ironed it, but I did not. So. Here it is, my progress on this one. Um, as you can see, I have worked on these berries. They have the little accent color in each berry that needs to be filled in on some of them. And a few, I think a few more, maybe one more berry there. Uh, then I have to do the berries here. I have to finish this banner across the top. 
and then everybody needs a little attention. Like I haven't done all the numbers. Um, I haven't finished her face or her, her hand. He gets the rake handle and more sheep. Um, other funny little things like that, maybe that need to go in. I think there's a bird that sits on top of this house. So everywhere needs a little something else. I did put my initials in, but I need to put the date up here and I want to do it 2020. So I'm going to finish this soon. Um, but I really love working on this. So that's my progress. I've been pretty bad about telling you the fabrics. I know that this one I did on Lugana. No, I did this on lamb's wool. I did this one on lamb's wool. I did the first two on Lugana. This is a 37 count mystery linen, I think, unless it's, um, I've told you before, I think, what it is exactly. It is smoked blue, 36 count Edinburgh. So I'm wrong, it's not 37, it's 36 count. I think the called for might be 35. Yes. And I'm just doing one thread. And I, I said before, I changed the color of the flowers from parchment. I changed it from parchment looks very brown tan to oatmeal and I'm very happy with that so that is the end of all the things I've been working on um, except I did start working on a little quilt thing I um, have been wanting to try paper piecing and fat quarter shop sent me to try out some of their quilt block foundation paper. And I've always kind of, I'm not somebody who reads instructions. I don't follow the rules, you know, I kind of <clears throat> wing it and it doesn't turn out just right. And then I kind of fudge it to make it work. That's sort of my, my typical go-to thing. Or I want to do it so perfectly that I'm paralyzed and I never start, I never try. So with these, I thought, <clears throat> I, can do this. I want to try this. I'm going to do it. And I watched a couple videos. Uh, one was Kia B's video and that was very helpful. And I thought I can do this. So I got myself, um, a little honey bun, which are one and a half strips on a roll, like a jelly roll, which is two and a half strips, but honey buns are one and a half strips. And that's what they suggest when you're using the six inch papers. They do sell bigger papers, 12 inch, which you can use a jelly roll on. But I thought, I'm going to try this. And, you know, what's the big thing with this? And why is it so good? To, well, I'll tell you why they're so good. They come out perfectly. They come out absolutely perfectly. <laughs> and they're fun and easy and quick to do. So I got a Halloween honey bun. And I just put a few blocks together. And I think it's really cute. And I'm going to do another row and make a table runner. I haven't decided if I'm gonna put sashing in between or not, but um, I'm really pleased with it. And so I am thrilled. Thank you, Fat Quarter Shop. I love these papers. I should use, I should use half square triangle papers. I should use these because it saves you a lot of time and energy and effort having to fudge things later. But I will tell you, I learned this from Kia B. I think the real trick to these paper is getting this little add a quarter plus um, ruler. And I'll tell you why, because it makes it work perfectly. It has a flat edge that's sort of beveled. So you put that right up against the line of the paper when you need to make a fold. So you can line it up exactly and then fold the paper back and then when you go to trim your paper, I mean trim your fabric, um, it has a little lip right here. So you sit this lip on the edge of the paper. I'm not explaining this very well. You'd have to, if you watch Kia B's video, she demonstrates, but it sits right on the edge. So you just take your rotary color cutter and trim off the excess. And that is why you get such beautiful, crisp, accurate, lines because every time you're folding and cutting it's perfect because you're lining it up on this 
ruler edge, which is easy to fold it up on, fold the paper up onto, and then you, you know, kind of go like this and take your stitches out. And then you flip it around and put the edge that has a lip on it so that it hooks against your fabric and you get a hook against the paper and any fabric that's sticking out, it's got the little quarter inch mark. I mean, that far. And so you just run your rotary cutter on it and it's a dream. It's so fun. So I gotta get back and finish that because I would like to do a few more blocks and then as I said, double it and make a nice little table runner. I think that'd be cute and Christmas fabric and all kinds of things and they have different patterns too. They've got log cabin and they've got the pineapple quilt and all those things. And while we're on that topic, there's some other goodies that I got from Fat Quarter Shop, which um, I am really excited about. These cute little scissor identifier guys. Um, I don't know if you watch Pam and Steph, Just Keep Stitching, and Brenda and the Serial Starter, Laura. I'm sure you do. And they talked about um, things they got from Amazon, which I have somewhere. I have them too. But they're tradition. They look just like this, except they're longer, and they're traditionally used for um, winding up cords, electrical cords, like on your hair dryer or something. You wind it up and snap the little magnets around it, and it keeps it in place. Well, they had the idea. I think Pam and Steph started this to use them on a bit like a pro big project like this, where I've got all this extra fabric. I can just roll that extra fabric up and put the little. Um, magnets on as a clip. Well, apparently you can do that with these as well, even though they're much smaller. You can just, because they're a magnet, you just slap them on there and they stick together and hold your fabric in place. And they've each got a little mark, like this is a spool, but it's a thread. This has a little um, piece of paper on it. It says paper. And this one has a little quilt star and Ohio star and says fabric. So the idea for these is that you put them on the handles of your scissors and naughty little children who are picking them up don't, or you, don't use the wrong scissors <laughs> for the wrong project. So I thought those are great. I think they're really cute. Somebody I saw had written in the comments on their website, I wish they came in singles because I've got many more thread and fabric scissors than in my sewing room than I do paper. So maybe they will take that into consideration and start selling them as a single thing so you don't have to buy all three if you've got, if you want to get multiples of, of one or other. That would be cool. And one more thing that I got from them that I just love. Um, I don't know if it was pumpkin patch or one of the, the patterns I was doing before and I said, oh, getting frustrated, I keep losing my place. And I think um, that Fright Night where it had the spider web, this would really have helped with those. It's so simple, but it's magnetic line keepers. And I had, <clears throat> years ago, I have, and I still have it, it's a magnet board. And then I had magnets I could put on the board and slide down. I could put my pattern on the board and slide the different magnets down. I even had one that was like a magnifier, um, clear magnet with a magnifier and a, a line. It was like a line keeper. These, you don't need a metal board or anything. You just, I'll show you, they open like this. So pretend this was the inside of the pattern. You just put it on like that and you can slide it up and down as you're working or you could use two at a time and you know, they have short ones for smaller patterns <clears throat> or if you wanted to really narrow in on a specific area, you could do something like that. And I just think that's such a fantastic idea, and I love them. They're cross-stitch line keepers, and it comes with a set of four. I think it's the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> no magnet board, because I used to hate taking that big magnet board with me. Like if I was traveling, I didn't want to take a big, you know, clunky metal board and not, you know, and have to go through security in the airplane and stuff. I don't know how they'd feel about the magnet line keepers. They probably would just say, what are these? And you'd tell them. 
but they're so much smaller they would pack so much easier and no board needed so fantastic um is there anything else that was it oh just a couple one more thing did i show you this before this book i love this quilt i'd like to make this quilt right now i'm working i meant to bring it in and show you I'm always a season late. Like, I'm working on Halloween stuff now. I should switch to Christmas for sure, but um, I started the, um, I think it's called Pumpkins and Cream. It's a fig tree quilt, and it's sort of all creams and light pumpkin colors and pumpkins all over. Uh, Joanna Figaro. <clears throat> and I'm working on that, but I love this quilt. Here's another picture of it. I just think that's really cute. I love it with the brown background. There's something yummy about that. And this book has a lot of cute ones in. This is Laurie Holt, again, and really cute, bright, cheery um, patterns. And here's my, here's my beloved quilt again on the bed. Um, so I might launch into that, but... I can't be too squirrely. I've got so much to do and so many things I've already started. I really, I really have to focus. <laughs> Send me some medicine. Help me, help me. Here's something I meant to show you um, a long time ago. Let's see. It came in July. And I misplaced it. I wanted especially to show it to you then, and I misplaced it. It's a little thank you card that somebody sent me. And her sister made the card, but I thought it was so cute, and I meant to show it, and I'm only getting around to showing it now, but it is just darling. Look at that. It says, sending my thanks, and it's a little kitty and a ball of yarn and, like, little lines all around. It just, I just thought it was so cute. Uh, people are so clever. And so thank you very much. I really like that. I, whenever I get a homemade card like that, I always save them. So this is being saved. In fact, if anybody writes to me, I save them with my stitchy things. But um, I just love this card. I think it's darling. And I meant to show it in July. And I don't know where my brain was. But there you have it. Um, I got some haul. Um, I belong to the Victorian Motto Sampler club and I get her linen so I got a half yard of this neutral sampler 40 count which I think is just delicious looking yum yum I think I said delicious a lot today maybe I'm hungry <laughs> anyway isn't that pretty I can't wait to do something on that and I've got enough of it there that's good then I wrote to my pal and at Dying to Stitch, and I said, I saw some new patterns that I think I need to have. And, you know, it's not 2021 yet, so I'm buying patterns as fast as I can. <laughs> ah, I loved this the second I saw it when the people were at the Midwest Cross Stitcher Street last year and got this Winter Rose Manor. I just think this is perfect. Perfect. Brenda Gervais with a needle and thread, and they very kindly sent me some... Brenda's brew to do it on. It smells so good. I don't know what it is. It just smells really good. So that is 36 count. And then another piece as well to do the little pattern on the back. So I'm all set, ready to go with that. I just have to find the flosses, which I probably have already. We'll just have to kit that up. That was one. I was watching Brenda and Laura, and they cracked me up. And uh, I was thinking... I wonder if I can use their taglines next year when I'm supposedly not buying anything except for Blackbird and Brenda Gervais. Buy all the Blackbird and all the Brenda Gervais and all the Teresa Cogut and all the Talon Emblem and all the, you know, all the things I love. I'm going to have to work out a plan. But anyway, um, I got When Santa's Away. So cute with the little furry mice on the stock. I mean, the little mice on the furry stocking darling and the fabric for that I got brr it's cold outside Brenda Gervais darling darling and that is vintage country mocha really pretty so now I can start some Christmas 
stitching. Mr. Marshmallow on Kermit, but it's not Kermit, it is um, Sybil Sea Glass. So it's not quite as uh, vivid green. I do have some Kermit left, so I will decide whether I want to use this for something else because I have something else that this would be perfect for. So I have to sort of figure out whether I'm going to do this one on Kermit or on this sea glass, but I love this color. Isn't that pretty? So I was just thrilled with this box. And there's more. <laughs> one more. Um, early Christmas morning. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And this one... I had them put the floss in because I think I had looked online and saw what was required and I needed some so I thought oh just send it so I can start it right away. This is winter brew again. Yeah, beautiful uh, 36 count winter brew. Again it smells so good and I will show you the floss so you can see how pretty. How pretty. So it's a much uh, sort of deeper cocoa feel to it. Oops, dropped one. Isn't that pretty? I can't wait to start these. So what I would like to do is finish up my heart and hand because that one deserves to be finished. It's such a gorgeous pattern and I've really enjoyed stitching it and I'm nearly there. I just need to focus on it and get that done. And I'll quick finish my prim number five um, so that I'm caught up with that. And yeah, then I can do what I like. And it's definitely going to be one of these projects. Probably start early Christmas morning. Um, since I have everything ready to roll and it's such a cute pattern. Um, or that and winter rosemary, or <laughs> one of these little guys, maybe they're so cute. They wouldn't take long. Um, this one, when Santa's away, you do it on mushroom lagana. It is over one. So that might be, take me a little bit longer, but no, it shouldn't be too bad. It's, it's pretty small. So exciting, exciting, exciting. I am very excited by all these things. And... Let's see. Um, did I talk about it? Yes. I'm just looking at my notes. I don't often make notes, but this time I did, so I'm going to make sure I've hit the things. Oh, giveaway. That's what I want to talk about. Um, I pulled names for the giveaways from last time, and where are they? I have the names. I'm just looking for the giveaways to show you. Oh, here. <clears throat> Well, that's next time. Hang on. Hold, please. Okay, I'm back. Um, I did the random comment generator, and it picked some winners. So the first one was the magazine, the Halloween, 2019 Halloween magazine. And that goes to Kathy Harris. So, Kathy, congratulations. Get in touch with me. Um, the second one were two chances for the locks and keys by Shakespeare's Peddler, and they are going to go to Nancy Taylor and Suzanne LeMay. So Nancy and Suzanne, get in touch with me. Congratulations. And the third one was the um, homegrown, homegrown pattern by It's So Emma. And that is going to go to Donna, H-I-O-R-N-S, Hyorns. I'm not sure. Hi, Orns. Uh, maybe it's my writing. I'm trying to read my writing. I have a photograph of it on my phone when I... Did the random, random common generator on, no. When I did the random comment generator on my computer, I snapped a shot of it on my phone, so I have that. So if I've completely butchered your name, I apologize. I think it's H-I-O-R-N-S, Donna. 
So Kathy, Nancy, Suzanne, and Donna, congratulations. And either send me a personal message on Instagram, it's at Stitching the Barn, or send me an email. I'll put all this in the box below, but it's realstitchingthebarn at gmail.com. And if you don't hear from me, if I don't write back and say, great, I'm so glad you got in touch with me, you won, ta -da, and try again. Because sometimes I don't see my emails. I'm pretty bad about that, so sorry. <laughs> I realized there was one other pattern I've been working on I forgot to show you. I knew there was something else. It's a really old Kathy Barrack, and it's from when they pa were packaged like this. It says Barrack Samplers Overshot Heart. And I think that was in a bag with something else. I pulled it out and I thought, oh, why haven't I finished this? I'm so close to finishing. So here's my progress on that. So that's coming along. It shouldn't take me very long to finish that. And um, I just have to finish. I've almost finished the darker color. I've finished filling in this mustardy yellow and then some little red squares and then it gets outlined. And then I haven't decided what I'm gonna put. If I'll put my initials and the date that she has there or change the date and make it significant to whoever's initials I use, I'm not sure. But there's a little bird and a couple little red designs and a heart. Um, but other than that, it's just a simple outline around and I will have to tell you, I took some quilts to be quilted. I think things that I had pieced a couple years ago that I had shown you in a previous video, I finally took them to be quilted. So I'm excited about that. I'll be getting those back. I told her no rush. I don't need them by Christmas because they sat in a bag for three years. They can wait a little longer. Um, and I also took a couple things to be framed. So I'm excited about that. I don't usually do that. Um, and I want to try framing myself. I'm going to try. But these were things I thought, oh, I, for some, one reason or another, I really wanted to have them framed. So excited about that. I can show you those when I get those. So plans going forward, I think I want to stitch something Christmassy. So that's what I'll do. I'll pick one of those patterns I showed you. I'll try and finish up this overshot heart and the prim stitch one for sure. And... I did get some haul that's not actually cross-stitch stuff, which I want to show you too. Um, I think probably a lot of you are familiar with um, Rebecca Smith, who does beautiful wool applique things. Um, she has a very distinctive style. Uh, if you look on Instagram, it's R-E-B-E-K-A-H, Rebecca Smith. Look on Instagram and see some of the things she does. She's just fabulous. And it's hard to get um, her supplies sometimes because they sell out so fast. She'll post and she'll say, I'm having a sale, you know, supplies or kits or whatever. And you got to you gotta go fast. That's the way it is on everything on Instagram. I think we've all been shut in and somebody says, I made bags, shrimp, they're gone. I made these cute little boxes, shrimp, they're gone. You know, that shrimp word, I got that from you, Laura. <laughs> um, but I got some supplies because I have a project. I took a class with her, which was so much fun. And I was all excited because she was coming to Pennsylvania again. I was going to take the class. Of course, COVID happened and it got canceled. But I got this really cool raw linen. And I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with it, but it's going to, I think it's going to be a background for something with some uh, wool applique stuff on the top of it. It just is the perfect oatmeal-y, soft, nubby. I don't know. I just thought, oh, there's a lot of things I think I probably could do with that. I got that. Then I got this fabric, which I love. It's a green check. And that'll also make a great background-y thing, I think. Then I got some silk ribbon, pretty evergreeny color. I thought these would be great for finishing things, even if I don't use them with the wool applique. Okay. And this, this little Pico, I think this is called Pico Edged. Um, it's like binding with a little crocheted edge. I thought that would be really cute, finishing a little pillow or something. But then I got 
Oh, I don't have to. I'll have to insert a picture to show you. I got the makings for um, three boxes. Like I have the three big round paper mache boxes, but. I got these little kits. This one is the Mary Box kit. And she gives you fabric, wool, everything you would need to do the little box. There's some rickrack in there. Oop. There's rickrack in there and all the wool and the felted things that you would need. Um, and it's a set of three. So then the medium sized one is the bird box kit. And the smallest one is the, or maybe I have it backwards. But this one is the pears box kit. Um, and I have the pattern somewhere. I have to find that. If not, I'll have to get the pattern because I have the kits now. But anyway, check out Rebecca Smith. She's just wonderful. I love her stuff. And you will fall down another rabbit hole like I do. When a misery loves company. <laughs> that isn't true. I'm not miserable about it at all. I love her stuff. Um, it, it makes me very happy, so no misery at all. Um, I would like to do a giveaway for next time, and I think it's time for some Christmas patterns. So here's what I'm going to give away this for next time. If you are interested in this one, put the put number one, and this is Brenda Gervais from last year. Souvenirs of the Heart. It is supposed to be done on 28 count Lugana over one, but you don't have to do it that way. You can do it any way you like, but that's how it's written. So Souvenirs of the Heart is number one. If you'd like this, put number one. The second one is a prairie schooler pattern, but it's it involves cross stitch and a little wool stitching. It is the mittens pattern. I think these are just darling. So you would do the cross stitch tops of these and then you get some wool or some um, felted wool or something felt and do this and embellish them as much as you like or don't like. She just has simple little birds on there with a little outline stitch and um, buttonhole stitch around the edge. Um, so cute. This just has a couple little snowflakes, little hearts, little flower. I mean, simple, simple, simple. And you could do this. And then tuck some little things in the top. How cute are they? Um, see, she has the pattern on the back for the stockings. So that's number two. If you would like that, put number two. Number three, obviously I really like these patterns because I have duplicates of all of them. This one I have three copies of, so I have two to give away. It is Prairie School or December. Now, this one is actually cardstock. These are not. These are like reprints. I hope that they're legit. I don't know how Stephanie tells whether they're legit or not. She has some way of knowing. I hope these are, but I'm giving them away anyway. Um, it's Prairie Schooler number 150 December. So you could do this. You could do this. You could do just pick one motif and do it as a little ornament. So I've got two of those. So if you're interested in that, put number three. Don't say prize, don't say giveaway, don't say winning, anything like that. Just leave me a comment and put those numbers in if you're interested in those things. So in the meantime, I hope you are all well, keeping well. I hope you have a fabulous Thanksgiving because I won't talk to you probably until after Thanksgiving. And stay well, and I wish you all good things. Bye.